I'm Adam Thompson, uh, I'm the Chief Engineer for the GT. Steering feeling is the way that the vehicle responds to your inputs through the steering wheel, but also the information that you receive as a driver that the car communicates back to you from the road, again through that steering system. Sportiness, in general, people perceive that as being how quick the steering is. So small inputs to the steering wheel translate to larger outputs from the change of direction of the car. That's what we define as kind of directness or sportiness. Busyness in general is how much information the car is providing back to you as a driver. Imagine you're driving down a B road and all of those undulations and tree roots and ripples in the tarmac you feel in the wheel because the wheel's busy and it's moving around. And then a sports car, that's what you're looking for because you're looking for as much road information as you can get when you're driving the car. In a GT you don't want that because it makes, makes the car feel busy and unsettled. So in a GT what we do is try to dial some of that back through the damping and the steering assistance so the car feels more serene. You, you feel less of that road information but when you start to put the steering angle on you do want to feel some of that transmission of information from the tyre back to the steering wheel. So it's about getting that balance right between damping and steering assistance in those two different types of car. The way that the car communicates that information to you from the road involves hundreds of individual components that have to work together in a symphony to make sure that the right information is coming to you to the driver. So the first piece of important hardware in the car is the connection between your hands and the way that the wheels turn on the road. And that includes the steering rack and the steering column. The steering rack is essentially a gear that converts the rotary motion from the steering wheel that you input in, into a driver into a linear left-right uh, force which allows the vehicle to turn the wheels. We have a number of variables in that system that we can modify. The first one is what's called steering rack ratio and that's the rate that the wheels turn versus the angle that you apply to the steering wheel as a driver. The next one is assistance and that is effectively how much hydraulic assistance we apply in the system to reduce the ratio that you need to apply load at the steering wheel, again to make those wheels move. To describe it then, so as you, as you apply load on the steering wheel, lots of different things are happening. You're, you're mechanically rotating the steering column, that in turn is turning a pinion gear, which then translates into this left-right linear motion on the steering rack. As that rack is moving, it's then pushing the track rod end onto the upright, and that is either moving the wheels in or out. Now, if you had no power assistance in the steering at all, it's literally the leverage of you mechanically turning this wheel into moving the wheels. And if anyone's driven a car that's more than 30 years old, you know exactly what that feels like. In a modern car system, there's an electric motor often in the column that can apply assistance, or you can apply that assistance hydraulically on the steering rack. As you start to apply torque to the steering wheel, the system is measuring that change in position of the wheel and applying a hydraulic assistance to help you move that rack bar across the car. What we can do when we're developing the car is choose how much of that assistance we apply and when we apply it in those steering inputs in balance with how much damping we apply to also bring those together in a system to apply the right amount of feedback to that particular amount of cornering load at that particular point in time.